What's good, YouTube? It's me, your boy, Squiddy, back again with another video. You guys are seeing the craziest thing on the screen right now. I have never seen anything like it, <laughs> literally. Okay, this is not just any regular score sheet, okay? You guys are like, oh, okay, these are their standings for like a locos, a 15-man locos. No, 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 this ain't no locos. <laughs> this was a regional in Winnipeg, Canada, in Manitoba that was held today on Mother's Day. <laughs> And this is probably the smallest regional in the history of the game. I've never heard of a regional with 15 players. I've never heard of any regional firing to that degree. Even like, okay, to give you guys a little bit of context, Canada is a really small compared to the United States, okay? There's probably about 33 million people in the entire country of Canada and probably around the same 30 to 33, 34 million in the state of California alone, okay? So our country is... It's big, but it's just so cold that everyone kind of lives on like a strip along closest to the border to the USA. So naturally, a lot of uh, communities are a lot smaller. Yu-Gi-Oh! events are a lot smaller. We only get like the one YCS per year, and that's usually a lot smaller. Typically, our regionals, at least in Vancouver, used to range between 100 to 200 people, so it was sizable. Even in Winnipeg, I've actually played in one of their regionals. They've gotten around like, what was it, like 60 or 70 people. So on a, a given day, a good day, they usually get 60 to 70 people. I don't know what happened here. Maybe it's because Mother's Day, but they literally got 15 people. So if you literally showed up to the event, all you had to do was finish in the top 50% percentile and that would guarantee you a mat. You had to go 2-2 two, two to guarantee yourself a mat. Like, look at this. Top 8, you still get the same prizes. Obviously, Konami shipped them the same prizes. You get the play mat if you top 8. But look, top 8. Six points after round four. Okay, guys, that's like 2-2. Two, two. You literally have to win two rounds. This is easier than most locals. I know there are locals that have been in California that have been like 50, 60 people, super ultra competitive. And on top of all of this, this is in Canada, so it's a lot more casual, the community. Um, and, and it's still... Like, all you had to do was show up and you got top 16. If you guys have never, like, really topped a regional, you can boast to your friends that you top 16 a regional by showing up to this regional. <laughs> you Basically, like, you would have gotten your invite if there were more people. But I, I don't know how the scaling works. I think it's probably only the top four that maybe get their invites or whatever how it works based on the math. But I'm just like, it's crazy that this is the smallest regional in the history of the game. 15 people showed up. And anyways, not to derail the video any further, but the reason I found out about this, huge shout out to my boy Raz, who is actually a longtime player in Winnipeg. He's been tearing it up. He just got second place at this regional. So he hit me up earlier today and he was like, hey bro, you want my deck profile? I got second place at the regionals Adventure Sprite. I was like, damn, Winnipeg regionals? That's okay, okay, let's check it out. This guy's still playing sprites, all right. Um, so I was like, okay, show me your deck. And then he sends me the proof. And he's like, I was like, how many, wait, how many people are in this? You know, like, to get a good idea of like, you know, what the competition was. And he was like, not much, it's a free top. He sent me this and I was like, there's no way, there's 15 people? Half the people got mats in this, it's absolutely nuts. So yeah, he's like four rounds of Swiss. There was no lunch break. <laughs> they didn't even give him a lunch break. They were like, no, 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 uh, uh, uh. We ain't gonna give you a lunch break. Even though there's only 15 people, even though it's four rounds and it's local, there is no lunch break. You guys are gonna play and then you guys are gonna get out of here. And on top of that, the judges were on their highest behavior. They were deck checking. He's like, I had one deck check, had me tripping. I was like, yeah, I had a deck check. The judges were like, all right, we like this is original, <laughs> this is competitive. We gotta make things happen. But again, huge shout out to my boy Raz. He's been a long time player in Winnipeg. Uh, we previously played together in Winnipeg a bit. Uh, both topped the regional back then. He's been coming with me to a lot of events as well. We always meet up and uh, we've been staying with each other for a couple of events. He's uh, been playing for a long time. So he's like uh, been tearing up their meta game. He's always topping their events here and there. So I thought it'd be cool to even take a look at what he played as well. I guess this is uh, the images are a little reversed, but okay, let's take a look at the main deck. So sprites. Just to curve off, I guess. I don't know what the metagame was like. I don't know what other decks topped in that event. I don't know if there are going to be deck profile videos, but uh, I imagine like in a 15-man local uh, regionals, you could probably top with basically anything that's half competitive. So he's got uh, Sprite Blue, Sprite Jets, uh, one of each of the names. Oh, a bunch of hand traps, which is interesting. I guess everyone's playing Drill now. And he's actually still on the Adventure Engine, which is kind of neat because I remember he also played this for the previous event at the YC250. Um, definitely very nice that you can kind of set up your negates before playing into certain hand traps. Um, 
Unfortunately, Faithful Adventure does kind of play an ogre a little bit, but again, they're kind of taking the next because you still get the token body, so you can still link off into sprint with it. He's also playing the frog as well to kind of, I think he's playing the Reaper Dokus to make the uh, totally awesome as well. So just need that one copy of Swap Frog to copy. Got the Nemo package, standard. Oh, a Nightmare Corruptor. Ibley's kind of cool. I suppose like sprites, you can still go into Ibley Lock just off of the gigantic sprite so you can kind of tailor your options if you're playing against cash Harry, you probably want to go into the gigantic sprite as opposed to the totally awesome which is more generic against different negates and then side frame gear uh driver the side frame package we're playing two imperms and then just uh foolish burial i guess extender for nimble angler standing and then extra decks pretty generic here just two copies of everything just to play around the diablosis obviously banishing cards here and there you can see the mat in the background and all its glory for a copy of Reprodocus, yep, as we predicted. Also, Lambda is kind of interesting. I guess you can kind of set that up where you can still be able to have enough bodies to make this at the end of your combo. So your gear gamma is just a live godlike hand trap while you have a board. Uh, everything else seems to be generic standard. We have the anti spells, the curry caros. Ooh, German. Those are kind of nice. Uh, Jizukiru is kind of cool, playing like the specifically this kaiju. I wonder if there's a combo for going into that. But we also see the Bistios as opposed to Ghost Spell. Standard, just getting bodies on the board, I guess, to put on some damage. Red Resonator, a Pointer, and Cosmic, and some back row hate. But yeah, I imagine this event was probably super easy for him because he's one of the more competitive players, probably one of the most competitive players in that area. So he's always been tearing up the meta game. And the fact that there was only 15 people probably made it really, really easy for him to just cut through like butter. He said he only lost to, I think it was Ghost Mourner in time or uh, Spooky Dogwood in time. So you can kind of tell like the meta game there is not super developed. People are still playing like um, wild cards over there. They're playing like Spooky Dogwood, which is like an older format card. It, out in the real world in like the bigger events so it's ironic that he actually happened to lose to that but i guess again it's like unpredictable because you never know what the metagame you know like you never know what people are going to side you never know what people are going to play like everyone's local metagame is kind of different so it kind of goes to show that uh yeah it could be a little bit of variance there but i just want to talk about like how crazy it is that this regional was so tiny it's 15 man i guess everyone on mother's day was just like with their mothers instead of playing the game so only the real grinders were there kind of showed up had enough people to run the event i thought it would have been even cooler if you know only like imagine eight people show up and everyone gets a play mat everyone's happy you don't even have to play it out at that point you're just like all right let's get a play mat and then we can just like not even play yu -Gi -Oh. but yeah i just thought that was funny so i thought i'd do a quick coverage congrats again to razzo for that second place showing it's probably uh pretty pretty quick and easy for him with this deck i know he's been playing it a lot so shout out to him and he's also like a pro halo player too that guy's got some hookups he's doing some coaching and stuff so guys definitely check out his stuff if you haven't already and with that i'll be signing off um if you guys have any thoughts comments leave me know in the comments below and subscribe if you haven't already i'll see you guys in the next one Bye bye